Hello, tubers! Out in the shop, I've been working on converting the four foot fluorescent tubes over to LED ones. I have step by step instructions on how to do yours and a full room view before and after at the end of the video. Also at the end, I included some non-related electrical tips. So, let's get started. Oh, here's what I've been replacing these with. And they're a T8 bulb, which means they're one inch in diameter. These are the T12s, which are getting replaced, and they're an inch and a half diameter. They both take the same tombstone. Here's some ratings of the bulb if you'd like to see them. Now these bulbs are called direct wire. There's no ballast required. On this end here, you have a dummy end. That's not connected to anything. And only on one end, you have the power which feeds them. Now, according to the instructions, they want the black on this side, the white on that side there for your neutral and line. We'll start by cutting the wires off to the tombstones, leave several inches remaining. The power cord had several diggers in it, so we're going to be replacing that too. Next, remove the ballast, as that will no longer be needed. There are many different ways the tombstones are attached to each fixture. This one here, a little pry with the screwdriver, flip the housing down, and it comes out. I'm removing the tombstones from the dead end so I can get the wires out of them to make for a tidier job. None of the tombstones here need a replacing. So to change out the old wires, turn them into a crank, give them a spin, and they come right out. And your fixture is ready for your new color-coded ones. Now would be a good time to check your tombstone for an internal shunt. All that is, is an internal jumper that connects these two terminals together. The meter I'm using here is set to 1000 ohms and it has a continuity tester. So when you touch these together, it will also give you a beep and an indicator. When testing your tombstone, you can't hear a beep on there or see the meter go up, otherwise you're going to have to replace your tombstone. Let's test this one here. And we do have a beep, so this would actually have to be replaced. But wait a minute here. I tricked you. I put a jumper on it. So if we remove the jumper, when you test it now, we're good. There's no short. So these can be used. Here's another little tip for you. If when you get your cover off your unit and you see only one wire going through your tombstone, you probably are going to have the ones with the internal shunt in them. But no matter what, still Test them anyway with a meter, then you know what you got. One more footnote for you folks too. On a tombstone, make sure you never put both wires in one side. You'll have a direct short. Always got to have one in each side. They do have an opening for two wires in each side here. Now what I've been doing is putting these on the end where the power comes into the fixture that way you don't have to run wires all the way through it. Now I wanted to install new wires so we all have a fresh start for our connections. Now here I have the old ballast with a black and a white wire on it. So you know we're not using the ballast we're going to cut these off and trim off the other end. And then to get a good length for each tombstone, put a little loop in it, and we're going to cut right here. Now we have enough wire to do each tombstone. For your tombstone leads, we're going to take about a half inch of insulation off each end. When inserting the wire, you have your choice between either one of these slots. When you put your wire in, you should feel a slight drag. And then once you get the wire in, give it a tug, make sure it's locked in good. 
And of course, we're going to do the same on side B. So, there you have it. Color-coded wires and the tombstones are ready to be installed in the fixture. Where these are from the body shop, they're pretty grungy, so we're going to take them out back and give them a quick bath. Turn the pressure washer down a little bit so the tin parts don't end up in the next coating. Well, the dirty work's over, so let's head off for the assembly. For the power cord, we're going to cut a 360 around the outside of the insulation. Just grab onto it and slide that part off. The bushing that supports the cord gets put back on and popped into place. Here are the ground wires being installed. Make sure your fixture is properly grounded. Here are the white wires from the tombstones are being connected to the white wire on the power cord. Connect the black wires on the tombstones to the black wire on the cord, of course using wire nuts. Notice there are no wires hanging out on the dead end. And here's the power end, as you can see, it's quite a simple operation. Decals come with the new bulbs to notify anyone servicing the fixture that it has been modified. The majority of the light comes out of the bulb on a side that says power on it, so you need that facing out. And there you go! That's how easy it is to convert your lights to LED. Instead of doing a couple light fixtures side by side of the difference, I thought I'd do a view of an entire room with the changeover. That way you get a much better idea. I thought I'd show you this handy little gadget here to have. A friend gave me this a while back. It's for testing live circuits. Anyway, notice I got a power cord plugged into the wall there. And we're going to test the white wire. Nothing. Ground. Nothing. And the black wire is live. I don't know. I think this one deserves a thumbs up. <laughs> here I have a 3 16th coarse thread screw, which is better known as a 1024. I don't know if any of you ever used your wire cutters that have them threaded things in them for cutting these. You just screw them in, give them an oink, and look at that. Sure beats using a hacksaw. Here's another one for you. You have a house outlet with a wire in it you want to get out. Take some of that similar wire, stick it on an anvil, give it a couple whacks with a hammer to make it flat. And now you have a homemade tool you can stick in the back of that outlet for a release and your wire will come right out. Here's another way to save some money on your electric bill. By having multiple switches you can turn on only the area you need for working. Here I can turn on the right front, the center, or by the electric bench all separately. The right and left rears are separate, and the rear center is on a three-way which can be turned on and off from either end. Well hey tubers, I hope this helps you out on your project and you grab some ideas here today. Feel free to ask a question, leave a comment, and hope to catch you back here again. Thought a few of you might enjoy this little bit of vintage footage. Here's a look at one of the carts that I built when I was a kid. It had two transmissions connected in line, six speeds forward, three in reverse. Top speed was around 45 miles per hour.